The Kent State Shootings, a conflict that further turned America against the Vietnam War. During protests on the campus of Ohio's Kent State University on May 4, 1970, four students were killed and nine wounded by the Ohio National Guard. The government's refusal to compromise with demonstrators angry about the invasion of Cambodia and the National Guard's campus presence led to a bloody and one-sided conflict which is still remembered today. In addition to giving activists yet more reason to protest against the war and the Nixon administration, Kent State was one of the major events that turned public sentiment against the Vietnam War and thus eventually led to the U.S. withdrawal from Vietnam. By the late 1960s, the Vietnam War was raging, with heavy American involvement beginning in 1964 with the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. The war had been growing increasingly unpopular in the eyes of Americans, with over 50% disapproval ratings by 1967. Protests raged nationwide, and college students were particularly involved. Reasons for dislike of the war ranged from unhappiness with the atrocities suffered by the Vietnamese to the mounting death toll of American soldiers. In 1968, Richard Nixon won the presidential elections, promising to put an end to the Vietnam War once and for all. Despite these claims, the war continued. There were many student anti-war groups that organized protests against the U.S.'s continued involvement in Vietnam, like the National Mobilization Committee to End the War in Vietnam and Students for a Democratic Society, known as SDS. Over the next couple of years, several major confrontations between protesters and police broke out. Chicago would see protests erupt in August of 1968, when the city hosted the Democratic National Convention. Protest rallies near the convention would end in terrible violence between the police and protesters, as well as media representatives. Seven people, who would later become known as the Chicago Seven, were tried for conspiracy to incite rioting at the DNC and found guilty, but their convictions were later reversed. Similar events happened across the country, such as in Washington, D.C. with the 1969 March Against Death where a quarter million demonstrators marched at major landmarks in D.C., though this event was more peaceful than Chicago. These organized groups of demonstrators showed that many were unhappy with the the U.S.'s overall attitude towards the war in Vietnam, even with Nixon's pledge. Nevertheless, by 1970, the amount of U.S. troops in Vietnam was decreasing, and Nixon seemed well on the way to fulfilling his promises. Suddenly, on April 30th, 1970, Nixon announced that U.S. forces would be mounting an invasion of Cambodia, as he claimed it was used by the Viet Cong as a base. This move garnered strong opposition from both Congress, who called it an illegal widening of U.S. war involvement, and the American people. New protests and dissent broke out across the country, including on and around the campus of Kent State University. By May 1st, one day after Nixon's announcement of the invasion of Cambodia, unrest among students and citizens at Kent State had begun. There were anti-war rallies throughout the day, culminating in rioting on the streets of Kent later in the night. Kent's mayor, Leroy Satrom, asked Ohio Governor James A. Rhodes for help, at which point Rhodes dispatched the National Guard. The next day, during demonstrations, the KSU campus's Reserve Officer Training Corps building was set on fire. When firefighters arrived on scene to extinguish the blaze, some of the demonstrators surrounding the building interfered, pulling at and attempting to sever fire hoses. The next day, Sunday, May 3rd, there was another tense confrontation between protesters and the National Guard, which ended when the guards used tear gas and bayonets on the students. Governor Rhodes gave a provocative address the same day, in which he called the protesters worse than the brown shirts and the communist element. This speech, with its failure to compromise, no doubt served only to inflame protesters, further fueling the boiling conflict. It also gave the National Guard the false idea that martial law had been declared, and that they had complete authority over the KSU campus. Bolstered by this, they decided to put an end to the protests by banning a rally scheduled for May 4th. The rally, however, would go on as scheduled. Late in the morning of May 4th, students gathered on the commons of Kent State University for a rally against the U.S. invasion of Cambodia and the National Guard presence on campus. Over 3,000 students had joined by around 11.30 a.m. However, many students were just spectators or there to give encouragement to protesters. At 11.49 a.m., Officer Harold Rice of the Kent State Police gave verbal commands for the protesters to vacate the area. These orders, however, were ignored. At this point, Brigadier General Robert Canterbury, leader of the National Guard on campus, gave orders for guards to use tear gas on protesters and for the guards to ready their assault rifles. The impact of the tear gas was lessened by winds on the commons, and some of the gas was flung back at guards by demonstrators. After tear gas showed no sign of breaking up the rally, National Guardsmen then advanced on the crowd, hoping to scatter them. 
The protesters, some holding rocks or bricks, moved up a hill bordering the commons, then down the other side and towards a sports field, with the guards following. The field was fenced in on two sides, and so the guards found themselves hemmed in by demonstrators. The conflict would continue to escalate, and rocks were thrown at the guardsmen. After about ten minutes, during which time a group of guards aimed their rifles at protesters but did not fire, the guards began to backtrack up the hill, intending to reconvene back at the burned ROTC building. Then, at 12.24pm, with an unimpeded route back to the ROTC building, 28 of the guards suddenly turned around and began to unload their rifles either into the air or into the nearby crowd of students. After the 13 second volley concluded, four students, Allison Krauss, Jeffrey Miller, William Schroeder, and Sandra Scheuer, were dead, and nine more were wounded. The victims of the shooting were standing anywhere from 70 to about 750 feet away from the guards. Two of those killed, William Schroeder and Sandra Scheuer, were not involved in the demonstration at the time of firing. Angered, the other students were on the brink of open violence against the guard until Kent State faculty on scene convinced the students to accept compromise and not retaliate. Immediately after the killings, the nation was racked with more conflict than ever before. Many Americans believed the statement from guards that their lives would have been in danger had they not fired immediately. At the same time, many believed just as strongly that the guards were in little to no danger and had fired on innocent protesters. Four days after the event, on May 8th, there were strikes and protests on college campuses nationwide. Kent State was closed for six weeks after the event, and many other colleges and universities began to close after the unrest began to spread. Despite these precautions, the protests were largely peaceful, and before long they spread to nearly everywhere in America. Within five days, President Nixon had spoken about the shootings, saying that when dissent turns to violence, it invites tragedy, a response that was seen by some as unfairly blaming protesters. Because of the shootings at Kent State and Jackson State, as well as the general mood of discontentment on campuses, Nixon formed the President's Commission on Campus Unrest in June of 1970. The commission released a report in September of the same year stating that while protesters did commit criminal actions, the Guard's actions were inexcusable. Meanwhile, in the same month, a grand jury in Ravenna, Ohio released a verdict that, to quote an article of the Daily Kent Stater, painted the guard in brilliant white and the administration in murky black. These conflicting judgments from various courts and juries would only further compromise the issue, and few guards ever went to court. There were still many who supported the administration's actions at home and abroad through the turmoil, but they were generally eclipsed by the rising tide of the movement for peace. Over the next couple of years, many more would come around to the idea that the protesters were not guilty as more eyewitness accounts of the events became available. In addition to traditional protests, college students also lobbied against the Vietnam War directly with their governmental representatives. Some even went to Washington, D.C. to talk directly with their senators and congressional representatives. Politicians who had previously been silently against the war spoke out, now confident that they had a solid base of support to be outspoken about their true feelings. In the November 1970 midterm elections, while Nixon's Republican Party gained two Senate seats, they lost 12 in the House, with a partial cause being their unwillingness to compromise on their pro-war stances. Kent State is a symbol of a time in this country's history in which the nation was deeply conflicted, as it clearly outlined the divisions present in the government and population. This was one of the first times that members of the anti-war movement had been brought into the public eye not as a group, but as individuals. Four young students dead, and nine more injured. While reactions to the shootings were mixed, many college-aged students collectively gravitated towards anti-war actions as a result of them. Protests broke out around the nation, coming from all corners of society. Students and adults alike rallied against what they saw as injustice. These shootings gave activists already angry at Nixon and his administration over their seemingly forgotten promises, even more impetus to protest. To them, these killings were an emblem of governmental willingness to use military force against American civilians. The extensive response from all across America shows that Kent State was one of the major events, along with others like the My Lai Massacre and the release of the Pentagon Papers, that turned US public opinion overwhelmingly against the Vietnam War. This sharp downturn in sentiment about the war would, over the years, cause enrollment in military training programs like ROTC to dwindle, and make those politicians still supporting the war even less popular. These politicians, faced with the mounting threat of losing office, would either begin to compromise on their votes on the war, or be replaced by those who thought differently. Eventually, these effects would lead to the US government announcing their withdrawal from Vietnam in 1973. Though hostilities in the region would resume before long, this public lessening of support would bring major consequences two years later. Due to the decreased American military morale, lack of new recruits, and the political disenchantment that it brought, this would snowball into becoming a critical cause of the fall of the South Vietnamese capital city of Saigon.